Pneumonia is an infection that causes inflammation in the lungs and results in fluid buildup, fever, cough, and difficulty breathing. It's caused by a variety of organisms, and that is exactly what we are going to discuss in this video. So if you're ready, let's get into it. Before we go any further, just know that we are not doctors. This video is for informational and entertainment purposes only. First and foremost, what are the causes of pneumonia? Pneumonia has several different causes, including viruses, bacteria, fungi, and even parasites in some cases. Common viruses that can cause pneumonia include the flu, RSV, and the common cold. Common bacteria that can cause pneumonia include streptococcus, mycoplasm, hemophilus, and legionella. And last but not least, common fungi that can cause pneumonia are pneumocystis, cryptococcus, and histoplasmosis. What are the signs and symptoms of pneumonia? The signs and symptoms of pneumonia can vary in severity from person to person. Here are some of the most common examples. Productive cough, fever and chills, tachypnea, shortness of breath, chest pain, diaphoresis, fatigue, and cyanosis. Keep in mind that there are other signs and symptoms of pneumonia. These are just some of the most common examples. So what are the types of pneumonia? Pneumonia is often classified according to how the patient acquired the disease. Here are the different types. You have community acquired pneumonia, hospital acquired pneumonia, ventilator associated pneumonia, and aspiration pneumonia. Community acquired pneumonia is when a patient gets it outside of the hospital. Hospital acquired pneumonia, as the name suggests, is when a patient gets it during their hospital stay. And ventilator associated pneumonia is when it's acquired while the patient is on the mechanical ventilator. And lastly, aspiration pneumonia is acquired when a patient aspirates bacteria into the lungs, usually from food, saliva, or stomach acid. Now let's talk about the diagnosis. How is pneumonia diagnosed? Pneumonia is most commonly diagnosed by looking at the patient's chest x-ray, which will show signs of consolidation. Some other tests and findings to look for include their vital signs, ABG results, PFT results, you can look at the sputum culture, complete blood count, CT scan, and pleural fluid culture. The patient's pulse oximetry would likely reveal hypoxemia, and a faster breathing rate is common as well. The patient's breath sounds via auscultation will likely reveal crackles or ronchi, and if you perform a chest percussion, a dull sounding note would likely be heard. The patient's PFT results would likely reveal decreased lung volumes and capacities. A sputum culture would reveal which type of bacteria is causing the infection. It could either be a gram positive or a gram-negative bacteria. And a complete blood count would provide the patient's white blood cell count in order to help determine if the infection is viral or bacterial in nature. For instance, increased white blood cells indicate that a bacterial infection is present, whereas decreased white blood cells indicate that a virus is causing the infection. So moving right along, what is the treatment for pneumonia? Pneumonia should be treated on a case-by-case -case basis, but in general, here are the common treatment methods. Antibiotic medications, oxygen therapy, bed rest, airway clearance therapy, hyperinflation therapy, and fluid management. Again, each patient will be treated differently depending on the cause and severity of the symptoms. In severe cases, intubation and mechanical ventilation would be indicated. Now let's talk about the risk factors for pneumonia. It's true that patients of all ages can get pneumonia. With that said, some are more at risk than others. Here are the risk factors of those who are most at risk. You have infants who are less than two years of age, adults who are greater than 65 years of age, those with weakened immune systems, those with chronic conditions such as asthma, COPD, and CHF, those with recent respiratory infections such as the flu or common cold, those who have been intubated and receiving mechanical ventilatory support, those who recently had a stroke, those who smoke tobacco, 
and those who are exposed to pollution or lung irritants. Keep in mind that there are several other risk factors for pneumonia. These are just the most common examples that you should be familiar with. So now let's talk about some of the ways to prevent pneumonia. The CDC recommends certain vaccines for the prevention of pneumonia, including the flu vaccine. Another way to prevent pneumonia is to quit smoking if you're a smoker. Also try to avoid breathing in polluted air. You should regularly wash your hands and keep them away from your eyes and face. Be sure to cover your mouth and nose as you call for sneeze. And you can strive to maintain a healthy diet and lifestyle in order to boost your immune system and overall health. Now I just want to share a little TMC exam hint about pneumonia for all my respiratory therapy students out there. This is just something to look out for when you take the board exams. Now I mentioned it earlier, but you should definitely be familiar with the word consolidation. Pulmonary consolidation occurs on a chest radiograph when the lungs are filled with fluid instead of air. And as it turns out, pneumonia is the most common cause of consolidation. So whenever you have a question that even mentions consolidation, your first thought should be that the patient likely has pneumonia. Now, of course, you need to look at the signs and symptoms in order to verify this. But just as a general rule, whenever you see consolidation, you should think pneumonia. Real quick, guys, do me a huge favor and hit the like button. It really helps support the channel and I greatly, greatly appreciate it. And while you're down there, go ahead and click the subscribe button as well because we have a ton of other videos on our channel that I think you will enjoy. I hope you like the information that was shared in this video. Pneumonia is an infection that affects millions of people each and every year. So whether you're a student, medical professional, or just a casual viewer, hopefully you now have a better understanding of this disease. We're going to go even deeper into this topic in future videos, so again, definitely subscribe if you haven't done so already. Just one final reminder, this video is for informational purposes only. Please speak with your doctor for medical advice and treatment. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. Have a blessed day, and as always, breathe easy, my friend.